Hey, what's going on, beautiful jellyfish? It's Tracy. Thanks so much for taking a little bit of time today to hang out with me. I really appreciate it. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about 10 additional EDH staples that you can run that are green. So basically, my thought process behind these videos are for people who are like, hey, I am looking to build up my commander collection. I'm looking to get cards for someone. What are good cards that I can trade for that I can run in essentially all commander decks? What are some really good staples? I only talk about 10 cards in this video. I have also done part one and part two, and I already have part four and part five planned out for you guys because green's the best and um, I love filming these videos for you guys so without further ado let's just jump into it the first card we're starting on a strong note I realized that I might need to move Zelda she's like standing directly in my line of sight and my computer is like about an arm's length away and I am blind you guys I cannot see I do not have good eyes I normally wear glasses you guys don't see me with my glasses on but anyways she's like blocking my cards okay this <laughs> sweetie First card I want to talk about is Guardian Project, and I really, really enjoy this card. I actually think I own one, and I actually need to put it in um, in Reen. I have to go and get it and then put it in there, but it says, whenever a non-token creature enters a battlefield under your control, if it doesn't have the same name as another creature you control, or in your graveyard, you get to draw a card. This is like an EDH player's dream, basically, because, well, it's card draw, it's four mana, it's an enchantment, and the fact that it's basically says that you get to draw a card, pretty much, whenever you cast a, a, whenever you cast a creature spell, basically, you get this. Now, it does say non-token, so that's just relevant there. That would be absolutely busted. This card's already extremely strong and extremely powerful, but it does say non-token, so that is just something to note. But I really, really enjoy this card. If you're looking for something to um, throw in your commander decks that'll get you draw cards, this is a great, great card to do it. Okay, speaking of drawing cards, apparently that's just what I was in the mood for when I was uh, chatting about these, is Garrick's Uprising. Garrick's Uprising is really cool. It's kind of similar to Guardian Project. Basically, it says that it enters the battlefield. Um, when it enters the battlefield, if you control a creature with power four or greater, you get to draw a card. Now, I really, really enjoy that automatically because if you're playing a deck that has bigger creatures, you just get to draw a card as soon as it enters the battlefield, which I really like. And then it says, creatures you control have trample. Okay, casual, I like it. And then it says, whenever a creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under your control, you get to draw a card, which is great. This card is awesome. It does a lot of different things. Three things in totals, if you have a creature with power four or greater, it's like really cool too if you have a commander where you know you can get this off and it's really, really easy to do that. Um, I have this card in Omnoth because literally every single thing in my deck gets me to draw a card with this off of this. So this card's great. Okay, talking a little bit about mana acceleration, we have Farseek. Farseek is one of my personal favorite mana accelerations. Now, what I really like about Farseek is it does enter the battlefield tapped, it's two mana, but it does say you can get pretty much anything. Now, it doesn't have forest on here, but if you're running things like Shocklands um, or the Trilands, for example, you're able to get those. Um, so that is just something to note. You can't get a forest from this, but you can get the other types. So like if you're like, oh, I want this so I can get a basic forest. I mean, at that point, you because you can get anything in Edge of the Battlefield tapped, it doesn't say non-basic. Just go ahead and get your um, your specialty limit that you can go ahead and get. So Farseek is great. It's one of my personal favorite mana acceleration cards, and you should definitely run it if you're having a green commander deck. Okay, um, sometimes in these videos, I talk about like a slightly more niche card where if you're building a specific type of green commander deck, I would definitely recommend that. And that is the card um, Verdu. I don't know how to say this. Enchantress, there will be a picture here, obviously. This card is awesome. I have to move Zelda. Hold on. It says, whenever you play an enchantment spell, you may draw a card. She's an O2. There's really not a whole lot to say here, but if you're playing enchantments and you're playing green, I would definitely recommend slotting her in. Oh, birthing pod. I love birthing pod. Okay, here's what I love about it. First off, it technically costs three mana. You can pay that Phyrexian life. It's two life. You don't care. Your life total is irrelevant in Commander. You've got like 700 million. For one mana, or you could you could do two if you're like, don't want to do your life total, or maybe your life total is low or whatever. Sack a creature. Search library for a creature card with a mana cost equal to one plus the sacrifice creature's CMC. Put it on the battlefield. You can only do this as a sorcery. It does not matter. Birthing pod is incredible. Um, it is, you know, I'm going to birthing pod away like my solemn simulacrum to get my seed board muse. That's one of my personal favorite things. That's one of my personal favorite plays. And that's one of my personal favorite things to do. Um, but anyways, yeah, basically 
you're like, oh, I'm going to kill my thing that I just don't really care about. And then I'm just going to get something better. I love birthing pod. I think it requires like slight play arounds in the sense where if you're going to birthing pot away your thing that's like six mana or something like that you're making sure you have a seven mana thing or maybe you just you know you don't do something like that so making sure you know too what's in your deck is going to be really important if you're running a card like this but i love birthing pot those cards are awesome okay genesis wave does anyone remember when this card was like really expensive <laughs> Does anyone remember that? That card, this card used to be really expensive. It's not anymore. It's X and triple green. Reveal the top X cards of your library. You may put any number of permanent cards with X or less onto the battlefields. Then you put all the ones that were revealed this way that weren't into your graveyard. I think Genesis Wave is like the coolest card because it's X. So you basically play this and you're like, okay, I'm going to Genesis Wave for like seven. And then anything seven or less just enters the battlefield what? This card is so incredibly good. And the other cool thing too is that the rest you go to your graveyard, which honestly I consider a bonus if you're doing some sort of like a graveyard like strategies, which like if you're doing Tassiger, Muldrotha, anything like that, you're like cool, they just go to the graveyard and then you just like don't really care about it. This is a great card. I like it. Okay, Yavi Maya Elder. So basically, Yavi My Elder says when it dies, you may search your library for up to two basic land cards. You reveal them, put them into your hand. It's a 2-1. It's really, really, really easy to get this off. And it gets you two lands, which I really like. Um, and you can pay two if you would like to, to sacrifice this. So it does potentially require a little bit of setup where like, let's just say you do this and then someone kills it or you block with it or like whatever, making sure you have that two man up because you do want to get the maximum effect of it. But if you're on a budget and you need something really cheap that's going to help get you cards and you care about creatures for example, in your graveyard, Yavi My Elder is a good choice for you. Ah, oh, talking about one of my personal favorites, that is Bane of Progress. I love this card. The amount of times that I cast this card, want to cast this card, wish I had this card in my hand, it's a pretty big number. I'll just say that. I think that Bane of Progress is absolutely incredible, and I don't feel like I see it enough, and I'm not too sure why, at least like in my play group, I don't feel like people play this card enough, and it's ridiculous ridiculous. So here's like the really cool thing that I love about Bane of Progress is my thing, you know, my, my thing is, is you cast it and you get to blow up all these artifacts and enchantments. To me, that's just like a really cool thing. And then this bonus effect is it gets plus one plus one for each one that you destroyed. So you're likely going to be hitting a bunch of things. I've had like 10, 10 Bane of Progress and I'm like, okay, swing with my big thing or whatever. It's great. It's like, I love that it gets that little added ability where it's like, ah, it just gets plus one plus one for each thing you destroy. It's like so cool. Okay, the next is Spore Frog. I love Spore Frog. There are so many cool things you can do with Spore Frog. Like if you're building like a Marin deck or something like that, throw a Spore Frog in there because you can totally like basically get a Spore Frog back every single turn, which is absolutely ridiculous. And then you're like, okay, cool. My Spore Frog comes back. Or like there's so many ways of getting it back. I love Spore Frog. I have it in Tassigar. It's like so incredibly good and it gets you out of so many sticky situations. It's great. It's just so cute. It's so annoying to play against, but it's so fun when you're the one controlling and you're the one playing it. I love Spore Frog. If you're playing green, definitely slot it in there. You're, you're going to need it. There's going to be a situation where you need it. You know, it's a fog on a stick. It's great. Okay, the last commander card is Burgeoning. Now, here's what I do want to say about a card like Burgeoning. Is Burgeoning is on the more expensive side. If you are building just your average run-of-the-mill commander deck, I don't think you need to go out and run and get this card. You can build a really great commander deck that's green, for example, for not a lot of money. Like my Omnoth deck, you could build something like, I know it's green-red, but like you could build a deck like that that's really inexpensive, like for 50 bucks and less or whatever. You can do that. It's definitely doable. It's definitely manageable. The the real the reality of the situation is that if you're building a more competitive deck and slash or a deck that cares a lot about lands I really like a card like burgeoning for example I only own one I have it in my Omnoth deck because Omnoth cares about lands and it wants to maximize my land drops and I'm constantly getting cards in I'm either playing multiple lands a turn or I'm getting lands into my hand and I want to play more than one a turn or whatever burgeoning gets you there it's also only one mana which is great you're very likely especially if you get this off a really early in the game you can pretty much play this card and then maximize it and get a ton of different lands as it goes around the cycle so I really really like this card um I again I think it belongs in a deck if you're like on a budget or something like that you do not need this card there's plenty of other things that you can go out and run but if you have you know a deck that you care about or you're just looking for a card that make your commander deck better and you care about lands like that go ahead and pick up a burgeoning so 
Guys, that is it for 10 more additional green EDH staples. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to our channel if you're not already, and I'll catch you in my next one.